Mike Kostroba, 1956 to 1960. Mike Kostroba had the distinction of being a member of the first four-year graduating class at Reynolds High School. As a freshman, Mike was not only the biggest student in his class, but also the brightest, and his dominance in athletics came as no surprise to the old neighborhood gang. Mike went on to excel in football, wrestling, and track and field, as well as the classroom. During his senior year, he earned a place in the state wrestling meet, all-conference honors in football, and he was named to the Shrine All-Star Football Game. Mike attended Lewis and Clark College, where he helped lead the Pioneer football team to an undefeated season in 1963. Mike's original desire to earn a law degree was sidetracked by his love of athletics. Instead, he became a high school teacher and coach, and later, a beloved athletic director of Sandy High School. Mike, who passed away much too soon in 1996, is remembered for his sharp wit, larger-than-life personality, and most notably, his wonderful generosity. Lived next door to Mike Costa when we were kids. He moved in in the eighth grade, and uh, he was a couple years older than I was, but he weighed 201 pounds when he moved in, I remember that. And then we went to the same high school, we went to the same college, ended up teaching and coaching on the same staff together. So, you know, we were lifelong friends. I'm Mike's oldest sister, being six years younger than he is. And I am the eighth child in the family of eight. Mike was number one. I'm Mike's brother. I was uh, the fifth one born out of the, uh, out of the family of eight children. If at a restaurant, if the food server brought a very small portion, he'd look at the portion, he'd look up at the food server, and he'd say, I spill more than that on my tie. One of my very first recipes was one that Michael wrote when he was a child, and I still have it. And here's this, you know, line printed paper with his printing on there. It's a toast and peanut butter and bacon sandwich. <laughs> to his Christmas parties, he would always surprise you either as an elf or as Mrs. Santa. So those are always funny when you would walk in there and see this six, four man dressed up as Santa's wife or um, the elf. That was always a pleasure. There was times I saw him catch the running back and the next thing I know, all you saw was the back of Mike's 77 jersey. And you couldn't even see that running back because Mike was all over him. His siblings are still in, in school and he loved to watch and share their accomplishments. It happened every year was this big dinner that he hosted when he was uh, athletic director at Sandy High School and Mike was a single person so I was oftentimes the hostess along with my mother and a couple of other people and that was always a huge huge fun event Many times there are as many as 100 people showing up. To tell you, every year, um, the day after Thanksgiving, Mike would get up very early and go to Fred Meyer's, get the donut and coffee, free donut and coffee, and buy several, several gifts. And then that following Sunday and at least two or three Sundays after that, I would go to his house and I would wrap present after present after present. And that man bought for everyone. He loved to give gifts. I ended up living with Mike for a couple of years, and I tell you, that was almost as tough as living with mom and dad. Because when you lived at Mike's house, you lived by Mike's rules. But I mean, he was straightforward. He called a spade a spade. Uh, but uh, he was a very honest man, true to his word, and uh, I just. I, I'm, I'm really happy I spent those two years living, in, living with Mike. He coached our neighborhood. We had, including me, I would get recruited to play football, basketball, baseball, whatever was going on, and Mike would be out there coaching the whole neighborhood. And there were quite a few kids in that neighborhood. Uh, the Moody's, Mitzel's, Merton, of course, the cost of biz. <laughs> Mike was driving a little, I think a 1964 Volkswagen, and he left the keys there. 
And so, like I say, this was during the Christmas vacation. It was cool. It was a little icy on the roads. And we took it out for a drive, and we ended up on uh, San Rafael Road between 181st and 194th, I believe. Anyway, so we're cutting cookies on the ice, and the next thing I know, I hit a dry spot, and we rolled it. It flipped it over. And here's John and I looking at each other, and so we kick the doors open and we run home as fast as we can and I jump in bed and believe me, Mike's out with his friends and and Greg, my other brother, was out with some other friends. Anyway, Mike comes home and believe me, I'm not asleep at all. I'm wide awake. I'm pretending to be asleep, but he didn't even notice his car was gone. And then Greg comes home about an hour later and asks Mike where his car was. <laughs> Anyway, it's been kind of a, it was a family joke for years and years and years because I never admitted to it, but I always smiled about it. So Mike knows what happened, but. Uh... He was one of the uh, formative Reynolds High athletes. He was one of the first good ones to come in. He helped anyone. And something that Mike did that most people don't know about as an adult, uh, he was, always in tune with the kids that he coached. And if he knew that someone needed something, he would take care of it and he would do it. He was a very giving person um, and probably I would say the smartest person that I've ever met. I just remember seeing Mike on the football field in high school and in college, I used to, we used to go to Lewis and Clark when he played there and watch his games. And I didn't see a better defensive tackle in the game in high school or college. I would say the things to Mike that I probably never could have said when we were uh, around each other in those times. But I would tell him how special he was, how gifted he was, and what a loyal friend he was. He was my ethical guider and moral compass, frankly. Learned a lot from him. I welcome back, give him a hug, and I'd probably say, did you bring mom and dad? Just that uh, I've always loved him and uh, always respected everything he did. I've, I think my, both my sisters have said this, and I don't think I've ever met a, a smarter man.